This video demonstrates how to calculate after-tax cash flow, net present worth, and rate of return for a situation where we have purchased a piece of equipment, it's generated some benefits over eight years, and it's going to be sold at a salvage value of $15,000, and we're going to use double declining balance method of depreciation. There are two purposes of this uh, particular video. One is to show how to create double declining balance depreciation numbers and also to show the two different variations with conversion to straight line and without. And then the other purpose is to show how to get the after tax rate of return. So first thing we're going to do is generate our uh, depreciation expenses for the eight years and I have a column where I'm going to do that for double declining balance and what I want to show you is that although there is a formula in the book and in the uh, video you watched about depreciation there is an Excel function and I'm going to click on the uh, insert function icon and select the double declining balance DDB function. Okay. Now the cost is the cost of the piece of equipment. So don't accidentally uh, put in the before tax cash flow, which it's next to. You want to put in the $100,000 purchase price of the equipment. Now I can just click on that cell, but I'm just going to put in the $100,000 value in the uh, field uh, for the function. Now the salvage value I'm going to leave as zero and what that does is it uh, generates the double declining balance without conversion to straight line. We're going to get back to that. The life that we're depreciating over is eight years so I'm going to put in eight and then the function gives me the depreciation for one particular period out of the eight year useful life and I'm going to put in the cell address A4 representing period one. So that's A4 and then I'm good to go uh, because it's going to um, assume for the factor field it's going to assume if I don't put anything in there it's going to put in a two for double declining balance so you could use this to do one and a half times the declining balance if that's what you needed to do but I'm going to use the default and then click OK and I get 25,000 as the first year's depreciation now since I addressed the period using A4, I can then uh, drag this down through all eight years and it will generate the double declining balance for each of those years. And uh, if I uh, total that up using the summation function, so home, auto sum, hit enter, it's $89,989. Now what has happened here is the double declining balance uh, formula just applied the formula every year until the end of the eighth year and it depreciated $89,989. However, if you'll notice we only needed to depreciate um, 85,000. So 100,000 purchase price minus our salvage value of 15,000 meant that we only should have depreciated 85,000. But we over depreciated. Now let's go and create the next column book value and uh, then we'll 
we'll look at this again. The book value is how much uh, we have left after subtracting the cumulative depreciation. So to start out with, we had $100,000. So I'm going to put the formula equals $100,000 minus, and this is cell D4. So my book value is now $75,000. The next year, however, my book value will be $75,000 minus the second year's depreciation. So I'm just going to put in cell addresses to do this. So that equals E4 minus D5. So my book value at the end of two years is 56,250. Now because I used cell addresses, I can drag this all the way down the column and it fills in uh, the book values. Now, I already put in a comment pointing out that the double declining balance method uh, over depreciated by $4,989. You can see that uh, with by subtracting $85,000 from $89,989. So that $4,989 we over depreciated it shielded us from taxes that uh, we now owe back so we have to recapture the 4989 and we will do that in the next column so my taxable income is my before tax cash flow minus um, my depreciation and then in the end of the at the end of the life I have to deal with the uh, issues related to salvage value. So my taxable income is equal to cell C4 minus the depreciation which is D4 and I have went ahead and used red letters to represent negative numbers and if I scroll down, I, I get uh, the taxable income for each of those years. However, I have to make some adjustments for year eight. In year eight, my taxable income is uh, the 23,000 minus the 3337 but I have to add back the uh, recapture of the 4989. Uh, so in this cell, I'm going to, in the formula bar, I'm going to add 4989. And so my taxable income there is 24652. The next column is my tax column, and my taxes uh, at 21% corporate tax rate are going to equal, um, and my cell is F4 times 0.21, and I have a negative $420. Now keep in mind, this has been mentioned, that when you have a negative taxable income, it shields the rest of your corporate income uh, from whatever the tax rate amount is. So the, I am going to save $420 in taxes from the more profitable parts of the business. So that's a savings. Now I can just drag this down to create my tax. Finally, I can, can calculate the after-tax cash flow. The after-tax cash flow uh, is my before-tax cash flow minus my taxes. So um, 
In this cell, I could put equals cell C4, then minus G4. Now you'll notice that the 420, because I, I did a minus of a minus, it now shows a tax uh, after-tax cash flow of 23,420, reflecting this tax savings. Now I drag this down, and I have to make one adjustment because my uh, formula for after-tax cash flow didn't in call, include column one. I need to add in the cash that I generated from selling the equipment in year eight. So in that cell, I have to put plus um, B8. In my uh, year eight, my before tax, my after tax cash flow goes up because I am generating uh, money from the sale of the equipment. So now I can use the net present worth function to create that. And the net present worth function is um, f of x, then the NPV function, OK. And the rate I'm choosing is 0 0.10, 10%. And the values are in that first uh, after-tax cash flow column. So let me see what I did wrong here. Oh, I ended up with a plus sign instead of a comma. So in my function, there we go. Nest present worth 16,130. And the internal rate of return, uh, click on my function icon, IRR function, OK. And let me move this over. And my internal rate of return is 14.6%. So, Hopefully this helps you understand how to go from before tax cash flow to after tax cash flow. Notice that the double declining balance I pointed out was based on uh, just straight double declining balance without conversion to straight line. But here's what I want to point out. If you instead in the double declining balance function up in the uh, function uh, bar, if you put in the salvage value in the second field, so I'm putting in 15,000, what that does is it ought just, just um, depreciates to the salvage value. And so if I put that in and then drag it down, you can see at the very end it zeroes out in year eight and it changes the um, numbers slightly and uh, you don't have the over depreciation taking that out um, you do have then an after tax cash flow um, that is that looks like it's right and anyway, so you get slightly different numbers. Um, but anyway, uh, that's because you depreciated it slightly faster. So you get a little more income. So anyway, this is the demonstration for uh, calculating after-tax cash flow and rate of return for after-tax purposes.